Hey everybody, welcome back, Blue here, and today I'm gonna go through Esperoba's deck profile. So one of the most recent uh, Battlestate decks we completed, I wanna say maybe about a year ago, I didn't kind of ballpark, it's been a while, as opposed to some that were some of the original decks we built uh, when the channel was starting. Really, not much has changed since its, since its original debut, because by this point we were much better at deck building and working with decks that uh, were missing a considerable number of cards. So it's a deck that we've come to really like because Espero was such a fun character. You know, he did try to cheat in the anime with Joey, but not so much in a, a cynical, sinister way like there were hunters because you find out Esperoba's story and you find out why he was cheating and he goes on to become friends with the hero character. So, and that's more like the uh, the path that the two main characters took in uh the Battle City anime. So Yugi went on to duel the actual villain characters, although some still not that, that evil. But Joey went on to duel a lot of the characters we had gotten to know from the Duelist Kingdom story arc. And whereas last time they were uh, Yugi's opponents, they now went on to become Joey's opponents, but still some new faces like Esperoba. So he was really cool in that he used a Cybery Machine theme deck with Jinzo as his boss. Now our deck really focuses on um, what we'd say was a bit of a control theme for him. You know, even playing with his opponent's mind as far as his fake um, telepathy was all working to control his opponents and that, you know, he knew what they were going to do, he knew what cards they had, and he knew how to work around them. So first up is not a monster he used. It is completely a card that we just threw in there randomly. So, you know, take about Grand Assault if you like. Feel free to replace it in your own version. But we went with Beast of Tall War. It is an older card going back to, you know, Pharaoh Servant and, you know, the original few booster sets. So it was a throwback that we liked. It was a fiend. Not incredibly fitting to his theme, but we felt it was passable. Additionally, so we're two Cyber Soldier of Dark World. Oh, and the Tall War does give him another um, boss monster as well. Whereas the Cyber Soldiers are little grunty things. Again, not a card he played. Something that we kind of thought was uh, plausible to throw in there. Now, a lot of the characters' decks that we have built from the Battle City story arc and what we call our, their normal versions, because now going through this Battle City event right now, we are removing cards that they had won as prize cards in place of cards that were already in their deck so that they can earn those prize cards as they go along. But the normal build for all of our characters from Battle City included those prize cards already. So what I'm getting at is in the Sesperoba deck, it was built originally with Serpent Knight Dragon, despite the fact that he didn't start the tournament with that card. So the same way Seeker's deck has the red eyes he took from Joey, even though his deck did not originally hold that card and... He didn't even win it, you know, from the tournament itself, but that's besides the point. So Serpent Knight Dragon, the one copy he took from Rex, followed by a card that helps make his deck a little bit faster. Again, throwing card, Cyber Jar. Esperoba is one of the decks that had the fewest cards um, to work with. Despite having, you know, a fair number of cards, it was still was a bit shorter than we would have liked. So we subbed in quite a bit. But now coming back to his actual cards, we have Cyber Raider. Um... Despite not amounting too much, it's still one of the cards I like a lot. The art was really cool. It's a machine, but it has a warrior vibe to it. So definitely a card that I would put in my uh, top list of favorites. But he comes in definitely behind the Fiend Mega Cyber. A super awesome boss monster and uh, the prototype uh, Cyber Dragon, essentially. But I think a little bit cooler. All right, getting on to his trump of the deck is Jinzo. Three copies because, of course, we need to fill out the deck. We want to make his Jinzo consistent because, of course, watching the anime, the characters are always going to get their trump monster, their ace monster, whatever their signature card is, they're going to get to it. They're supposed to. Whereas in these duels, we want to increase the quantities of such so that we can make it more consistent that we do see those kinds of monsters. So, Bree Jinzo's definitely helps him deck have that lockdown ability. So again, it's likely he really only had one, but three works. The last monster, and again, goes on my list of favorites. I mean, really, a lot of Esperoba's monsters, or almost all of them, were just something that stood out to me as like, I want one. 
So this is Reflect Bounder, a very unique looking monster covered in mirrors and has a really cool effect in that he just, he reflects or returns the damage. This ended up being uh, Esperoba's own undoing in combination with Jinzo. It made for quite an entertaining uh, finale to that duel. You know, a little suspenseful with that roulette spider. A card not too long ago was finally printed, um, which really makes any current Esperoba vs. Joy matchup a lot more exciting because you finally have that component. So starting off the spell cards is a card that he played by name but had a different effect. This is Amplifier. So this is not a card we have any intent of changing to its anime effect, which in regards to the duel with Esperoba, it just boosted Jinzo's attack points. Uh, we're leaving it with the whole, you know, it's printed effect where you can still play your trap cards. This is also comes up in the Lecter deck that we built because the Jinzo plus Amplifier is his deck master ability. So this card doing double work in two different decks, but you know, with the same unaltered effect across both. Going with his control theme is brain control. So again, we're about to get into quite a few cards. Most of the rest of the deck is really contained with a lot of cards that really weren't played, but cards that we felt fit his theme of control. And they're kind of mild, not too specific to anything, aside from the fact that yes, this is a card that Yuki played. The rest of the deck is where it gets kind of interesting though in the way that it works. So two machine conversion factory. So this does help out um, giving an equip card to Jinzo to give it that small power boost. So now we get a twofold thing where the amplifier card allows you to play traps like it's actual printing, but the machine conversion factory contributes to the equip card that amplifier was in the anime. As far as equip cards go, this is really just a random throw because it was different. It was just one copy of Megamorph, followed by three copies of Mesmeric Control. This is the only card that we see him play against Rex is that he has Mesmeric Control. It's putting the Serpent Eye Dragon to sleep. Esperoba takes it from Rex. So wasn't in the actual duel we saw it, but it was seen in his previous duel, so it works. Now, this next card, while having a different anime effect, we didn't choose to go with that. Mining Control is, I mean, I like the art, and in the anime, he used it to take Joey's Swordsman of Landstar, which he then tributed off. The problem is that this printing does not allow for the tributing, and that's fine. This gives him another card to take an opponent's monster, but unlike, say, Brain Control, he can't use it as a tribute to build up his own monsters. He can just remove it for the turn to get in a, you know, possibly direct attack. But it's a card that it gives it a balancing, which is why we didn't change it. Now, the last three cards, last three spell cards, I'm sorry, are Monster Born and Two Pi Greed. And they are, again, if you haven't seen as many of our videos, we use them all as generic fillers because they're very useful and they help a lot of characters get, you know, extra step up. Because, you know, some main characters have a lot of draw power, some smaller characters have a little bit clunkier of a deck, and it's harder for them to get going as much. So, Poggy and Monster Born are very useful in these decks so that other characters can kind of play at the speed that they need to. So it's really there to serve for an, an engine more than um, actually cards that fit the character's own theme and deck. Call of the Haunted, one copy. If you're using a Jinzo, this card is basically Monster Born. Two, Negate Attack. So we want to give him some kind of defensive card. We like to have decks have some way to protect themselves. Because when decks are uh, just too overly vulnerable, the duels don't come out very well. Because again, what works in the anime or really is like what works in as seen on TV doesn't always translate to the actual card game. And while we usually try to fill out characters with cards that come more around the era when they're playing as well as cards that fit their theme, this one is just the latter. Psychic Shockwave. So we really wanted to play off the Jinzo theme, but we didn't want to get into too many of the other Jinzo monsters. 
Like we definitely did not want to add Jinzo Lord when we had every impression that Jinzo itself was Esperoba's big Trump monster, especially because it was his anti-card. So Psychic Shockwave is another card that lets him get to the Jinzo faster and it's very Jinzo specific. So we really liked it in that it, it worked for Jinzo and it gave us one more card without being too, too much that really rounds up that his deck focuses around Jinzo, but as well as his control theme and his other monsters. So this was how we built Esperoba's deck. I mean, there's definitely places you could make some changes of your own if you didn't like Beast of Tall War or the Cyber Soldier Dark World. But overall, when we built this, we did what we thought was close to his theme and his style. For the most part, the deck has come out really well and we really like this product we have. So this was again, one of the most recent decks that we had built, so it hasn't really changed much at all uh, since its original debut. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next duel, the next deck profile coming from these Ballastity decks. Like, comment, subscribe.